Hey there everyone, Andy the Broke Geek here. 2018's Black Panther was a huge hit for Marvel Studios, earning over $1.3 billion worldwide and, among other achievements, was the first superhero film to be nominated for a Best Picture Academy Award. But how do you make a sequel when your lead actor passes away? That's the question the studio and director Ryan Coogler had to grapple with when Chadwick Boseman sadly passed away from colon cancer in 2020. Instead of recasting the role of T'Challa, the filmmakers instead chose to incorporate the character's death into the narrative, resulting in Black Panther Wakanda Forever being Marvel Studios' most emotional film to date and an exploration on grief and legacy. The film begins with the off-screen death of T'Challa and his funeral before jumping one year ahead. While Wakanda has opened itself to the world, the African nation is refusing to share its most valuable resource, vibranium. Wanting some of the precious metal, the US searched the oceans using a vibranium detecting machine, but are thwarted by the mysterious inhabitants of an underwater kingdom known as Talokan. Their leader, Namor, wishing to keep the existence of Talokan a secret, demands that the Wakandans find the inventor of the vibranium detecting device and hand them over to him, or risk his wrath. Playing Queen Ramonda, Angela Bassett arguably puts in the film's most powerful performance. Despite all the losses she has suffered, she knows she still has a country to rule and protect. Ramonda's speech at the UN, delivered with such mesmerising intensity, is a standout. The rest of the cast also do an admirable job, with Lupita Nyong'o, Danai Gurira, and Winston Duke also putting in very nuanced performances as Nakia, Okoye, and Mbaku respectively. The film, however, centres around Shuri, focusing on her grief and inability to accept the passing of her brother. Letitia Wright does a wonderful job expressing the character's inner turmoil, ranging from deep sorrow to vengeful anger. Comic book fans will be delighted that Namor finally makes his big screen debut. The character's trademark pointy ears, green swimming trunks and winged ankles have been incorporated, with Mexican actor Tenoch Huerta imbuing the antagonist with a likeable arrogance. Like Killmonger before him, Namor makes some compelling arguments, even if his methods are a little questionable. The same attention to detail given to Wakanda is carried over to Talo Khan, evident from the intricate costumes, exquisite set design, and Mayan sounds in the score. The decision to infuse the underwater kingdom with Mesoamerican influences is a smart one, giving Talo Khan a distinct culture that differentiates it from Atlantis as seen in 2018's Aquaman. For those wondering, Namor came before Aquaman, the former making his debut in 1939 and the latter two years later. Despite all the heartbreaking and heartwarming moments, the film does have a few flaws which prevent it from reaching the same heights as the first instalment. Characters such as Annika and Riri Williams aren't given enough meaningful screen time, and the balancing of multiple story threads proves tricky, with the film buckling a bit in the middle. Even though Talokan is well designed, it isn't properly developed, a disappointment given how well Wakanda was established in Black Panther. We never get a true understanding of how the inhabitants of Talokan live, or how their society operates. Additionally, the action scenes are a little generic, with the car chase in particular lacking any kinetic flair. Nevertheless, with Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Ryan Coogler has crafted a fitting tribute to Bozeman's legacy, allowing audiences to mourn his loss, celebrate his life, and understand the impact he had not only on the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but on our real world as well. Wakanda Forever, indeed. Well, those are my thoughts on the film. If you haven't seen it yet, there is a mid credit scene, so be sure to stick around for that. And if you have seen the film, let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. Did you like it better than the first Black Panther film? As always, please give this video a like and subscribe for more geeky content.